one that that enrages me to no end is this fucking two star review from Robert Crisco. Crisco is fucking a hack sucker. <laughs> I fucking ran to this asshole's reviews countless times. So many. There's so many. Countless, and he has the worst taste. This dude sucks. <laughs> two stars, my ass, dude. Welcome to Every Odd Member with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour, and I'm joined, as always, by my bright and yellow co-host, Alexander Volt. Say hello. Hello. This is Every Odd Member, the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. That's a new discography per episode, and today we'll be discussing every album by Grave Diggers, Six Hi. Feet Deep. I thought we were covering more than that, but I guess we're covering just that. Just that, no. Just, just the one. Hey, listen, that's all anybody really cares yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Grave diggers, happy Halloween, everyone! For those who like that kind of thing, we we ran out of <laughs> we ran out of Danzig bands. Is what happened. We had a tradition. We had a fucking tradition. First it was the Misfits, then Samhain, 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 and then Danzig. And it feels I feel like I'm missing something. Like in life, I, I, need, I need a Danzig episode every year. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we we're still keeping it spooky. So uh, in, the, in the in the yeah similar vein. God, we should have just covered Danzig solo albums, even though they suck. I I'm kidding. I'm, we, we, we did that. No, no, no. The solo albums, Glenn Danzig. Oh, the the, I, bl- the Black Arias. Damn. Those. Da- oh yeah, yeah. Oof. Those. Damn. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about Grave Diggers, and no one requested this, but why the hell not? It's three albums. Uh, one of them is a classic. It's three okay. albums, but we don't talk about the other two. <laughs> Which is part of why we started this podcast, too, it, to talk about the things no one talks about, even if they deserve it. it. It was one of the things that I was the most excited about when starting the podcast. Like, no one's talking about those weird 80s albums. Yeah. And then uh, we had to listen to them, and they fucking suck. They most of them are so bad. I I still yeah I still kind of appreciate it. Like no one cares, but I can say I've listened. I've tried. listened to these albums. No one cares for lots of them. So many albums. And oh my god, I so I've been a. I mean, I'm assuming you've been a fan for ages of. Grave yes, Vegas. I've been a fan for ages as well. But throughout all of those ages. I refused to listen to the la- the, the the following two albums. So, I, I only yeah. acknowledge the 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 cl- six three deep the same way everyone. <laughs> but now, now I know why. Yes, I had morbid curiosity, which is is fitting for <laughs> for it, this episode. This more than any other hip hop group, because I tell you, I never get that with with hip hop that I hate. Yeah, nothing about me will ever be curious to hear the bad stuff ever. <laughs> I'm never going back to those albums. <laughs> Dude, I'm never going back to them. <laughs> I probably won't either, but I th- I, th- I think there's some I- things. It's such a it's so offensive the drop off. And insane. everyone knows this, it's but insane. if you don't know this, the drop off will fuck you up. Yeah. Oh my god. They say don't don't judge a, a book by its cover, but uh you can you can judge these albums by their album covers. You, Very you know easily. exactly Weirdly enough, uh, yes. The quality they're going to be. God. Anyway, uh, we have, I mean, there's, there's some info about these guys around, but there's not like, there's not as much as I was expecting. No, no, there really isn't, which is crazy. Very because crazy. Because Prince Paul and RZA yeah. are like two of the most prolific producers in hip hop. Yeah, and beloved as well. Uh, but our boy Tom, Tom Osman, our history guy, so, uh, he compiled, well, he made he made some notes from a podcast, which uh, the podcast is what had happened was um, with Open Mike Eagle and Dante Ross. They had uh, Prince Paul on, and he talked all about it. Oh yeah, I didn't listen to it, but I have plenty of quotes here. Yes, I'm going to retroactively go yeah. back and 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 listen to it. Uh, but yeah, follow Tom Osborne, our history guy. There's links to all his social media in the description. You know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Tom Osmond sounds as well as his Substack, Tom Osmond.substack.com and his debut album, so much for all his work. Uh, links to all that in the description. Hell yeah. Uh, how long, how long you, you've been a fan? Probably like, you know, got into the Wu-Tang clan in high school. And then like this followed probably like a year after. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's this one of the most classic, Hip hop albums. We're, gonna be, uh, we're already going to be t- discussing the first album in the middle. Everyone, I know everyone knows. Everyone, why you, we're here. And if you don't know, if you don't know, 
Go listen. Oh my yeah. God. There's there's no words. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna have a bunch of words, but you get yeah, you get it. Also at the the time it was so when it was released. Now there's a, f- a few people who do horror hip hop, like horror core. Horror core. Like Interesting um, name for it. Yeah, like Flatbush Zombies is is one that comes to mind. Um but the grave diggers were kind of the first to like really tap into it and make it make it popular i guess yeah so, and they, they coined it after they were already a band right uh yes i think it's something that got tacked on later uh looking at the wikipedia mike has pulled up here i see also like ghetto boys yep. is considered yeah. Horror. yeah um if if you guys like this spooky stuff uh, i'm just gonna throw out uh three six mafia did oh. a, a really cool like horror core album called the mafia six i think that's like the second greatest horror core album so right under this one yeah right yeah <laughs> of right course. under this one but um yeah so it's this this subset of hip-hop and it's weird because it's not really like when you talk about like the Wu-Tang Clan, this is more of like a side note. It is. And even though I, I'm going to say something real uh, out of pocket here. All right. What's that? I it, 10 times out of 10, I'm going this album over Wu-Tang. That's absurd. That's yeah. yeah 10 times out of 10. And but even, slow even, your roll. even you though slow I, your roll. even though I feel that way, I still see, I still can't take it out of my head as a as a side note yeah. to Wu Tang. Yeah, it's like impossible, even though it's so amazing on its own. Um, I will also say it is crazy how like, um, even like in Prince Paul's discography, I think it's considered like low low rung or yeah i mean it's a beloved album so but like it's always like you say these other things and then the grave dig that's insane uh maybe if they just kept it at one album maybe hey hey don't take the legacy i don't know what the fuck do i know uh, but yeah if you're gonna wait if you if you're gonna recommend one stray prince paul album, which one would it be oh man you you put me on the spot yeah, here damn right i did and i fucking book up dude Dude, it's a, it's a moment to shine, dude. Dude, I didn't even <laughs> hear that he, dead air. That's, that's <laughs> well, it's hard because like he has his work with like De La Soul. He has yeah. his work with yeah. um Handsome Boy Modeling School. I never uh De La, De La Soul is one that you, I always mean to mean to listen to, but never do. You know what? Um especially you, the first time. It's not Prince Paul like proper um by himself because damn the automators on it but i think i think people should check out uh handsome boy modeling school so how's your girl um which you know maybe we could get around to one day they only have two albums so interesting all right all right so yeah that is yeah um, By the way, when I say I go ten times out of ten over Wu Tang, it's not because I don't like Wu Tang. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I do, do indeed love Wu Tang. Yeah, uh, yeah. I found this uh, weirdly enough from old Mr. Mark Prindle, that record reviewing website that I plugged in the past. Yeah, uh, that's now defunct for the past decade. But found Grave Diggers through there, weirdly yeah. enough, uh, and it was, you know, it was a funny review and it was, it was like, gave it a perfect score. I was like, what, what, what is this? There is a, I know Wu-Tang a little bit. Yeah. And I was this little wide eyed idiot kid. And man, I, it's so far above most hip hop <laughs> in the world for me. Yeah. It's just so incredible. It's a perfect, perfect album. Flawless. I'm sorry to finish both in the songwriting, the, the unexpectedness and inventiveness of it. And in sheer consistency and flow and pacing, it's just, Unmatched, and we haven't even started talking no, about it. Yet. No, my god, so you might as well. We, yeah, we might as well also join our Patreon. We were, oh, yeah, so, so excited. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll throw the plugs in when they get in there, sort of scaring people off at the very beginning. Patreon, yeah. slash every album ever. If you want to bonus episodes, and uh, if you want to actually suggest episodes, tier two is where you go. Uh, but for now, there's like we alluded to very obviously earlier, there are three albums. First one came out in 1994, last one. 2001 with a couple asterisks for 2006 and 2020 
two. Uh, we'll talk about as uh, they come up. But this is—I mean, we've already started talking yes. about it. You might as well fucking get it started. This is 1994's Six Feet Deep. And just when you thought it was over. I always forget this up starts with poetic. Grave diggers cut. We need to talk about the members. We can do that after. Fear makes your brain go numb. Your brain got a glue with a poetic has the best voice on this album. Really? I love it. I think it's hilarious, but he's not my favorite voice. Wow. I guess I just like unique voices. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I have a strong fondness for for Kwan. Yeah. A strong fondness for his voice. What a hilariously kooky piano sample. It, that is like some like Prince yeah, some Scooby Doo shit. Yeah, that is some like signature Prince Paul stuff right there. It's, uh, it, but it's fucking catchy. Uh. <laughs> I remember years ago as a teenager, my mom walked in on me listening to this band or this album in the middle of Poetic, yeah. and she just started laughing. I mean, it's kind of funny. It is. Yeah. Uh, all right, all right. Obviously, best personal favorite. Yeah, best personal yeah. favorite. Yeah, yeah. It is. But, but what's important is how perfect this fucking album is. It's one of my favorite albums ever made. I think it's one of the best albums ever made. Yeah. Truly. Um, I So I thought this was like co-produced by RZA and Prince Paul. Mm-hmm. Um. Mostly Prince Paul. Oh, it is it ninety eight percent? Yeah, Prince Paul. and yeah, then for Fru- sure Fruquant. Um, oh yeah, we didn't. So the silly members, uh, obviously the risen Prince Paul, and then you got uh, Fruquant and Too Poetic. Uh, what what are those pseudonyms? Uh, Poetic, Gr- the Grim Reaper. Go ahead. Grim Reaper is yeah. Poetic, and then Gatekeeper is Fruquant. Yeah, and then of course Rizza, Rizza, Rizza 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 Rizza. And I think Prince Paul was this uh, uh, Undertaker or uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, I think he's the Undertaker. Yeah. You know, Taker. Way cooler than... Than uh, Roland, 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 Roland? Then, uh, yeah, then Mark, uh, what's... Uh, I forget his real... His last... The, his, the his Undertaker. Sh- we know his the... Sh- his <laughs> shoot name. <laughs> mean Mark Calloway. There we go. There yeah. we go. I only remembered it because I remembered it because I threw mean in front of it. That's how fucking high I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's his last name? It's Mean Mark Calloway. Mean Mark... And then this gets going. Yeah. Yeah. For fucking dirt dorks. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so what did Prince Paul say about this, um, or has, about them getting together? Um, um, yeah, I guess him and RZA had the connection from both being on Tommy Boy. Uh huh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking of the movie. It's a label. Yeah, Tommy ain't my motherfucking boy. Oh shit. If, uh, oh fuck. Hold on. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. This is not good. Um, yeah, so RZA, before he was on Wu-Tang, or joined the Wu-Tang, you know, he had a solo career, Prince Rakim, and uh, yeah, stayed in contact with Prince Paul. Uh, I also think it's a shame, looking at these notes, that he did Prince Paul didn't call himself the Paul Bearer. That was that yeah, is that was originally his idea, but it, it was too too corny. A little, it's a little corny, a little corny. Mean, it's wrestling. Meanwhile, I mean, he actually I just realized he went with the Undertaker instead of Paul Bearer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why he did it. Yeah, no, oh. I like Paul Bearer. I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Uh, by the way, if everything that just happened right now, my turns out my laptop got unplugged without me realizing it, and uh, everything almost died right now. Saved it though. Saved yes. It. Uh, but yeah, and this led to this weird super group, kind of in a way. Yeah, and uh, the other thing about this album in particular, I think Paul wanted it to be like the, like what Wu-Tang was for Wu-Tang, like mm. to jumpstart all of their solo careers. Yeah. And then it bombed. <laughs> like n- th- The crimes against humanity that I've done in it, with art in the art world are pretty bad, but this getting completely shunned when it came out is insane. Yeah. Also way better name over in, in Europe. <laughs> oh, the, the name of the album. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, we, we all know the, the term rigor mortis. Well, what the, with, with a little couple more ends, yeah. but well, one more end, really. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's it's also funny that it's only in Europe. Where only in Europe. <laughs> where there's the, obviously there way more no, white There's people. no black people at all. <laughs> uh, but back to the album, I guess. Uh, every song is incredible. Like, start to finish, even the skits, not skits, even like the, the, because there aren't any skits on here except for like bits, very, and, bits and pieces. They're like minimal. Yeah. Thank Christ, they're minimal. But there's like a short transition tracks or like mini songs. Even those are way better than, like they have any business being. There's mm. like, Mommy, what's a grave digger? It's a minute and a half and I'm just dying for it to be a full song. I'm yeah. dying for it to be longer. It's so fucking good. So short. Um, I think the, another appeal of this album is like it's the hardest the rizza ever sounds like he this leans into like his unique goofy voice the shoutiness of it the yeah the, the gruffness it, yeah yeah in a way that you only get like bits and pieces of in other groups and yeah. and yeah i i like the interplay between him and poetic and then fruquans is kind of like the base level you need someone to get you like yeah he's like a, if uh the rizzo was on like downers or something he's like still still a gruff kind of voice but way more low energy yeah yeah so you kind of have like this this yin and yang of those voices and then fucking poetic man yeah fruquan gets you back Every, to yeah, normal right. yeah uh and uh, I don't even know what to fucking say. Because so we could talk about each song individually. Might as well. Just because My they're all so different from each other. And they're all so goddamn good. And we also don't want to spend too much time on the next two albums. Yes. Um, yeah. So after that opener, we get nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, which. Dude, that. Uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Nowhere to run. That, um, that drum sample is like the most 90s gangster rap drum sample yeah. ever. And it's, I don't know what it is about that specific sounding thing that's impossible not to love. It, I, I could put that on for anybody and they'll get into it with just that drum, that yeah. drum sample. It's impressive too how Paul was able to like, like have his style, but also kind of like bring in some like Wu-Tang griminess. Yeah. What she you have to with the which is why I thought they did split producing things, but um, I think one of my favorite Prince Paul beats, "Defective Trip," is just oh yeah, it's just so you like unique, and you know immediately it's like one of his. By the way, that whole rant I just gave about the drum sample and nowhere to run, I meant it for "Defective Trip." <laughs> There you go. There you go. That's what that I makes meant. More sense. So, nowhere to run, nowhere to run is also uh, a fucking great song. Yes, but I, that. I'm, I'm talking about the yeah, yeah you get it um uh, what am i looking at um so two comes of blood is the other transition track that is way better than it should be that that track is crazy and wasn't even intended to be a song like he was messing around in the studio principal yeah and he was like trying to make it work he's like no there's nothing there and um rizzo was like no no we could do it we could like we could rap over this. Actually, put it on because it's fucking bizarre. It's, it's one of the nuttiest, like... It's like the most one of the most murdery hip-hop things I've, I've heard. Hey, yo, Reaper, those kids out there seem mad thirsty. You got something for them to drink? Yo, we can wet up two cups of blood. <laughs> arm to the leg, leg, arm to the head. Yo, be the vessel, Dude, the vessel. What an abrasive-ass sample. Cheek to the R to the Y. As I get deeper than a grip, resurrect kid. Don't go against that the fucking tape. Slang is my Rewind me, yeah, yeah. The hearty party with the bang buzzer boom. Check my tune, it got you. And by the way, th that's like the most uh, atonal, abrasive thing on, on here, besides like Bang Your Head. Mm. Those two are like the, the really brutal songs. Yeah, Bang Your Head is the like, that's the like metal song on yeah. here. Um, but, but, every, uh, Everything else is okay. So one eight hundred suicide is like the very smooth. Oh, man, that's such a great weed smoking song. I agree, and yeah, like sample too. It's it's wonderful. Uh, I remember this is the fucking kind of hipster dork that I, that I am. Uh, years ago, with that show Love on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, I was I was binging. I never finished the first season, by the way. I just I binged half of it. Yeah. And one of the episodes, uh, when I had suicide comes on. I'm like, oh, they're putting in a stupid, boring, <laughs> hipster, rich white guy show. <laughs> like, just it felt so like, I, I pre, I respect your taste, but it's just it's a weird context. Yeah, like it's the only gangster rap. Song. This isn't gangster rap, but you know what I mean. Like only like threatening rap song in the entire series. Yeah, and it's just because it's so smooth and nice. It is how it. Um, it has more of like a classic rock feel to it but when you sit down and listen to those lyrics yeah it's this heavy heavy shit uh blood brothers is, has one of the best bass lines ever I've, I've been singing that chorus in my head just randomly for my entire life pretty much that's the only beat not made by prince paul yeah that one is well no he's on there too, as well it's a uh, fruquan and prince paul oh i thought fruquan like per- made that Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Fruquan made oh, he, Blood Brothers. I'm I'm sorry. No, that's, from, that's what we're talking about. And it's both of them on there. Me and Mike are not having good days. Right. Yes. 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 Rest. Both of them. But yeah, sole production for Fruquan. No, no, no. It's both of them on there. No, I mean, like, he doesn't have a hand in oh, creating. Oh, he, you're saying he doesn't, he doesn't do. Have a hand in creating any of the other beats. Oh, this yeah, yeah, is, yeah. This is the one thing he worked on. Yes. At, He's done more, but like pr- pr- you get it, production wise. Oh man, that we, we just ran around the entire world to finally get back to the same spot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so some, I think the most um, standoutish, obvious, easily talked about skit is the intro to Diary. Sorry, Diary of a Madman, and I feel like such a fucking like school teacher trying to explain these songs like well <laughs> diary of a madman well in this skit the fellas it's ridiculous it's fucking ridiculous it's hilarious but it's also like the least believable lawyer and judge characters yeah in <laughs> which is <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous but the song is rad i i love the concept for the song yeah. too that it's one person and each member represents different personalities yeah. like it's it's this fucking cool it's and they make they make it work for sure and also that song out of everything here is, is like the most spooky yeah it has like little pheromones yes. in there and it actually sounds like a halloween song like yeah more than anything here that one yeah that one and bang your head are like the two most like on brand horror things oh yeah, yeah. all around because this aside from a, a few moments uh this isn't doesn't it's not very horror-y. I mean, lyric, lyrically, I think it's more consistent with horror than like even the, the next two albums. For sure. But uh, most of them feel just like their own thing. Like It, it, it didn't seem like they um, started the group to be this, well, we're going to make this evil thing now. At least music, at least Prince, Paul. Yeah, it feels like they kind of just like stumbled into that and it just suits them the best. Mm-hmm. Because we'll talk about some other things on the next album, but it's like, this is very much what they're good at. Yeah. And it's unmatched. I, 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 this is like my second, what I is growing up. This was my second favorite hip hop album of all time. And uh, there was only one above it. Yeah. And uh, that was a Pacos 91 from public enemy. Oh shit. Love that album. But these days, who knows? But this one, I, I'll never get tired of it. This is, yeah. I also like how this is a lot of people's introduction to Jim Jim Croce. Jim Croce, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, that's how I discovered that yeah. you don't pull on Superman's <laughs> cape. You don't spit in the wind. Yeah, you don't. On Here Comes the Grave Digger. Yeah. By the way, that song, what a crazy sample. That weird little <laughs> slidey thing. It's so cool. It's it's very cool and it's crazy. Some of this was like this made in like Prince Paul's house. The dude is spectacular yes like spe- and it's because i never really thought about it until doing this episode uh, I, I didn't realize that he did literally everything <laughs> like yeah everything about this album that i love is the music and he did it all yeah oh man i think for the the title track that was recorded live and then sampled afterward i could i could hear that there's like a rawness to that when they're very they're like screaming yeah, everything sounds like it was 
you know, the, them sloppily jamming out together. Mm-hmm. And then uh, even, yeah, even the, the, the group vocals, it sounds way, way more garagey. Uh, but a fun song. Kooky. Again, it's another kooky, kooky song. Um, and then uh, I never heard uh, Past the Shovel. It's not on North American editions. It's I not know. streaming either. I, I've, I've, yeah, forgot to look that up. I'm sure maybe it's on YouTube, but uh, things happened in life and I, I didn't get around to it. Indeed. And some of those things involve listening to the following two albums, <laughs> which you should probably talk about, even though we're dragging our feet, pulling it off. Uh, unless there's anything else to add about this one that, that happened. Uh, well, that's Prince Paul was very unhappy, I think, um, <clears throat> with the response to it, obviously. Mm-hmm. And this is hilarious. Because uh, they asked him how, or he was started talking about how much it costs to make, and this is this is what he says. Uh, he says, "I don't bank on having a royalty ever." So he tries to keep things uh, as cheap as possible. Smart man. Exactly. Cheap as possible, by the way, was around 150k to make this album. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's just like trying, trying to keep it a, a modest cost. Yes, modest. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's an expensive album. <laughs> it sounds great though. Uh, and then, uh, well, I, I guess this happens a lot. He says, uh, my records as a general rule of thumb get appreciated 10 years after they were made. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about right. That's a fucking bummer, but hey, he's alive. So therefore he's eaten. Um, and then he says that he thinks it should have been multi-platinum and yeah, it should have. Yeah. I mean, now, now it would have been way harder, but you look at. Just for like how popular Wu Tang Clan was, like off that alone. Yeah, how do you? Yeah, how did that not translate? I I have no idea. And then, um, I also see here that Hype Williams directed one of their music videos, which again is crazy because I think he did uh, a lot of those like iconic Busta Rhymes music videos. Oh, the, the Fish Eye ones. Which, again, are kind of borrowing elements of horror. Like, he has the one song with the, um, I think it's sampled from the Psycho score. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it is crazy. Like, all the the stars aligned for Gravediggers, but no one, like, realized you had these these things until much later that's insane just listen to it once it, oh my god it just blows my fucking mind one that that enrages me to no end is this fucking two-star review from robert crisco chris Gow, this fucking it, hat cock sucker <laughs> i fucking ran to this asshole's reviews countless times so many there's so many countless and he has the worst taste this dude sucks <laughs> Two stars, my ass, dude. Ridiculous. This is one of the best albums ever made. And uh, if you haven't heard it, you have to. It is, but it's perfect hip hop in my brain. It is perfect. Perfect. Oh, God. But we have a couple more yes. and we, we, we get some dropping off of members, unsurprisingly. Which is also sad that it they never could come together. And But I also understand it because at least from the, from the onset, it's like, no, this is, this is a, um, uh, uh, when you're improving a concept, <laughs> what is it? What is it? I forgot the fucking term for it. This is a, damn, what's the, I'll, I can edit this out, but God damn it. I have to remember that fucking not proof of concept. Yes. That one. Oh, okay. Man, I'm an idiot, dude. Yeah, you got you it. You literally you got, you got said in one try. You literally said the word concept when you're improving a concept. <laughs> and then you're, you're right yeah i did do that shit <laughs> <laughs> this is, so it's a proof of concept uh, and again he wanted to, to jump start the rest of their careers uh and it, it also seemed like he put a fucking ton into it like creatively mm-hmm. knowing like all right just make this one as good as possible which yeah. he did and then we'll be done so it's like obviously i'm not gonna have anything left for more i obviously don't want to do more yeah but then um well, we have more. The other three members had other ideas. Indeed. So this is, well, let's just talk about it. This is 1997's The Pick, The Sickle, and The Shovel. I'm already nauseous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. 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 
I, and you can tell right from the album yeah. cover that oh. something is. Yo, it's I got such a so bad cover. What's this happening? Guy, they look like a boy band. By slug shot the drug spot. A boy band with gold claws. <laughs> get a new house. It's like living in a war, walking through shootouts, and you doubt God exists when hard fists. So if you find this to be a underwhelming beat, get comfy because this song is not short. You played out. You laid out. Your heart is so crazy. Because like, Rizzo is one of my favorite producers ever, that you and I have never men, felt so underwhelmed by his production it's until this album. It's straight shocking. I was like, surely, I shouldn't believe it was Surely there, there will be like a gem or something amongst here. I was blown away when I looked to see that this was... Reza produce, producing this. Also, this is my worst least favorite. Worst least favorite. And I didn't think <laughs> we were going to come together. I didn't. And it's I was two in a row, baby. I was convinced that obviously the last one's going to be the worst. And then <laughs> this piece of shit comes out. I'm like, no, no way. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. If anything, it makes the third one look better. The third one is not a good album. But, but it, God damn it. This it looks, one is so much worse. It looks so much better in comparison. It's insane. There this, is. I can't even. I. The, the few nice things I could say about this, there's all kinds of asterisks. Um, real quick, <laughs> I should have time time stamped it. I was going to throw that opening song under the bus, like right when I was like, oh, man, fuck this song. I just heard RZA say, but my penis rises up in the morning like a phoenix. And I was like, never mind. This is flawless, <laughs> it's a good line. It's a good line. <laughs> flawless song. Um <laughs> Yeah, this is really this is really off, and it it kind of feels like putting uh, a square in a round circle here. Um, a round that, circle? Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. There's not actually anything wrong with it. I'd say there's plenty wrong with it. Well, <laughs> but it's it ends up being so boring it is one of the most boring yeah it's 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 boring dude yeah and on top of that there's just that first album has so much personality and character i don't feel like it's there anymore it's completely gone there's not an ounce of it it's might as well be a completely different band there's nothing about it that feels the same except for the the voices and even then even poetic's voice isn't like he's not he'll never be as as unhinged as the first album yeah and yeah, it's just like it reminds me of a lot of like indie rappers I would like check out when I was getting into like underground hip hop where like a smaller act you're like okay, you're just starting out whatever but like dude, you're working you're working with the RZA here. You can't Yeah. And it, Prince Paul is still in the band. He just decided not to not contribute <laughs> he he produces the outro which <laughs> still stinks yeah <laughs> so, uh but that's basically it and then, then you get all kinds of different you get what, fourth disciple true master um and Duck yeah, and, be a law. and yeah this feels like the the first one it's weird it's it's wu-tang adjacent yes but it's still its own thing they they don't feel like they're being suffocated by that by trying to be wu-tang this one to me what felt like they were trying to be wu-tang and that is ultimately one of the things that hurts it oh man it also it also it, it feels bare bones like everything feels weirdly empty and it's not like the last album felt jam-packed but it, everything felt like it sat in the right place everything mm -hmm. felt you know it felt right this not only are the songs insanely long for some reason, they they also don't fuck around with anything else. They they stick to the one beat or the one sample and just hammer it out for six minutes. Yeah. How? How in the world could that end up being a good idea? Uh, unless, you know, there's a good hook or something catchy there, I could get that, but the, there's nothing hooky or catchy. There's nothing hooky or catchy. And also they're they're fairly short, like short samples it, it, it's not like they're like they're not long passages they're really short little things so they're repeating like a thousand times per song yeah i think the one of the worst songs on here is fa fairy tales with a z listen it's bad i i put it as a as a positive oh, purely shit. because of how fucking insane it is those, <laughs> it, it still sucks yeah those string samples are kind of abrasive 
I'm gonna ask you to put that one on in a second because it's so fucking yeah. crazy. But what makes the song ultimately a, a very terrible song is the 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 female R&B vocals that come mm-hmm. in and just shit all over the place. It's just so janky on this record. Hearing R, like smooth R&B vocals, it makes no sense. J- janky is a, a good word to describe this album, I think. Indeed, but let's hear the intro to that, just because. I mean, this is wild stuff. <laughs> it's so funny because RZA uses samples like this in like with Ghostface. Yeah. Or, who's Goldfinger? Who did this? Um, he's probably like some Wu Tang disciple member. Story, it's really right. big. And it, so that sample is insane. And I, yeah. at least that was interesting. It's one of the few actually interesting, interesting moments in the whole thing. Um, another example of like where I feel like it's, you know, trying to be Wu Tang is on Pit of Snakes. It is so similar to that, oh, yeah. to that song, It's Yours, off Wu Tang Forever. Like, it this feels like, oh, here's the like leftover. There's a, a million voices in that song. They're yeah. all hilarious and they're all mixed way too loud. And then I actually think the night the earth cried, I think on a ghost face or Raekwon album, I think that beat works. It's I think, fine. I think it's Go ahead. I think those two have enough emotion and character that they could tell like an interesting story around that beat, but not not here. There's it's just boring. Night the Earth Cried, I found it to be one of the one of the most forgettable ones here. Um, and it's not even like it's that bad. It's just inexcusable when you compare it to what we had just one album ago. Uh, but there are a couple moments that I don't think are that bad. And I say that pretty lightly. Um, 12 Jewels, I think, is it's still weak and bare bones, but it's not too bad. It's all right. Uh, and then... I actually find the wacky vocals to be a pretty interesting on elimination process. Yes. Don't I love do. it, but it's still, you know, very, it's, it has that, uh, repentance day has an, um, an unbearable, unbearable intro. It is lengthy as fuck. I felt like that song was more on brand, but it's exactly. still, I don't, it still yeah. misses the mark. Yeah. It's fine. It is. It's also darker than the rest, which I think is novel. Finally, a, a horror song. That's dark. Yeah. Uh, and then, the last uh, positive I'll say is uh, "Deadliest Biz." Man, I I was okay for I, okay with it the 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 first time I heard it for like the, a little bit. Second time I was listening, to it, I was like, "There's no how how in the world is this good?" Mm, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, I think uh, towards the end there we also have what's going on, and that kind of helped me sum up my feelings about the album. Where like lyrically, they are doing a a lot like they're they never stop yeah yeah. they're doing their best like like rhythm gymnastics with the words and their vocabulary but that's not why i'm listening to the grave dig i I agree wholeheartedly they're they're amazing mcs all of them yes all three of them on this one all through but like they're all they never even the next up they never stop being good but holy shit is it not worth it to listen it's yeah, it feels like this like conflict of interests almost where like you could tell they're talented, but it's just everything misses the mark. Musically anyway, yeah. But yeah, skyscraper link drop off from the that first <laughs> album to this one. There's I I can think of few examples yes. ever where the where the, there's this big a gap between albums this is this is insane because i would think with that kind of drop off i i'm like oh well rizza and principal are both gone yeah but no no they're there yeah well yeah (laughs) mostly rizza and it's just oh man i don't know what happened here but unfortunate yeah uh unfortunate album (laughs) cover songs it's a yeah it's a perfect storm of shit man Sorry, but <laughs> we got one more. There, there's a reason no one, no one talks, talks about. about. Yeah, this, yeah, I get it. But we have the last one, and 
there is a couple more after this, but they don't really count. This is the last actual one. We'll talk about it all right now, baby. This is 2001's Nightmare in A Minor. I'm going to dedicate this one to all my cast that's locked up. Grave diggers. We're trying to dig you out of that grave right there. Yeah. Through the eyes of a grave digger. Yo, everything is going to hell. My super thugs is all going to jail. Blowing that, and bail on ball. That dirty bass. Oh, you like that. I like it. It's everything else. My peeps keep crawling deep into the trench. This just reeks of 2001 hip hop. I fucking hate it. It is of the times. Yeah. Send out the SOS. Save our soldiers. But also, Kodak sounds pretty damn good. Not bad, yeah. He's a fucking legit good MC. I to get cast a swine like it ain't I do, positive I do shit to move around the, the, the rhyme scheme is still more simple because I think it fits better you'd rather hear about those spooks and ghosts yeah. don't let it get you down son when the block's locked down dirty cops come around with four pounds and niggas right. get shot down well we pretty much got the the idea there um, so I one thing we didn't Go, mention going uh, into this I thought this was gonna for sure <laughs> this was worse for about 12 hours for me <laughs> and it's because it's all so bad but it didn't it didn't take it in the end uh I'll explain in a second but uh I, I, th- I think w- uh what did Paul say about the last album I think he said the last album was like poetics lyric album like mm-hmm. he was really shining but yet he stuck with me more on this album Interesting. Uh, and yeah. yeah, this is a, a posthumous release for him. That's right. He he died of in 2001 of colon cancer. So Jesus Christ. Yeah, I it believe. was like five months before it came out, right? Or a couple months. <sighs> it just, yeah, it didn't say, but it's several months. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's also another crazy and sad, but kind of nice thing. Uh, I think his diagnosis was for three months and he pushed to like two and a half years so he like he made this record while he should have been dead yeah which is a kind of eerie parallel yeah uh also like um some of the album covers for this <laughs> oh they're bad <laughs> i don't know which one you're seeing right now on youtube i picked one but they're no i'm showing you i'm showing them all right now yeah, these yeah. are bad these yes. are hilarious uh, um they look like bad xeroxes like you would never guess these guys worked with rizza and no. and prince paul these are the dudes at, at times square that you're trying to avoid handing you this cdr oh yeah they're they're selling you this mixtape out of their trunk or something christ um i will say false things must perish that caught me by surprise a lot of things coming by surprise. That one being absolutely one of them. It's probably the best song on the album. It's it's actually decent. It actually, it, I that one that one made me fucking that made me stumble a little bit because I again fully expect this to be worse and like oh come on that's actually yeah, yeah. cool that actually sounds like a, a, a definite step down but at least in the same genre or in the same essence as the first album. It's a little more comfy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, even even the skit. I say quotes, uh, last man standing, they call it a skit, but it's like a song with, with, uh, it's like an instrumental with, you know, dialogue thrown in. Um, it still feels like a song. Even that one, I don't think is that bad. It almost has, almost has like resident evil sounding samples in there. Very neat. Uh, I, and then the other good song on here, I think is burn baby burn. You got it. You, you got that right. After that song, I was like, oh, boy, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Like, is this actually maybe yep. the soul? Not amazing. Not an amazing album, but maybe it's better than people let on. Yeah. <laughs> and then the remaining 27 tracks. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. It's a gauntlet of shit. It's insane <laughs> how bad it gets. <laughs> Every song after that, just fucking dump, 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 dump. Dude, like, Wanna Break is so poppy. Oh, man. I This shouldn't have worked. Um, Reeks of early 2000s dog shit. My ears perked up a little bit for, uh, did I just imagine this track? I don't see it. Is there Which a track one? called God versus Devil? Sure is. That is it. I don't know why it's not listed on the wiki. Uh, it's, it's like a two minutes, two minute track. It's absurd. MF Doom didn't get to that sample before they did because it's like a cartoon character yeah. talking about wearing a mask. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. how the fuck did Doom not? <laughs> oh, shit. You're right. 
<laughs> well, when this, this is recorded in 99. Oh, uh, yeah. They maybe, probably beat him to it. Yeah, they yeah. probably beat him to it. Um, Fucking everything else. There's nothing nice. I can, uh, There's a cup. Maybe a, the nicest thing I can say about the rest of it is that sometimes you'll find a what you think is a cool sample only to hate it by the end of the song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the last one that kind of pissed me off again, because I don't. I know they got the ties to Wu Tang, but like, and I know like, um, you know, mathematics and all that is obviously like oh. nation nation of Islam thing and all Today's that mathematics. But I just oh, man. none of that registered. It. I just fucking hated it. It's it's bad, and again, that goes into like stop stop trying to like go into that 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 Wu Tang thing. Yeah, that's not where you guys work. It's especially with whatever the music is here, which is yeah. who who's who's the producer here? Uh, it's all over the place. You got yeah, you got like people with ties from Wu Tang again. It I think like. Diamond J is the, the the main replacement though. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> dude, what a knockoff name! <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an off. That sounds like a white wrestler doing a hip hop gimmick. Uh, Diamond Dallas J. Diamond St- that. <laughs> <laughs> you killed me. Oh, uh, so, but yeah, at the yeah, end, you really can't. There's just they're just treading water. It is. It's uh, it's quite rough. Uh, notable for poetic, really putting in the work, and uh, and he, he, they, again, what we were saying with the last album, the the actual rhyming on here is fucking really cool. And if you if you focus and you tune out all of the music part of it if, and just listen to the voices, it's actually very, very impressive. If you are like a nerd for rhyming and you can just like focus on the lyrics, the, these last two albums may be w- worth checking out if you're a geek like that, but everyone else, no. Nah. Yeah, it's it's a lot. And it's also a 61 minute album. It's It's pretty taxing. This is a. Uh, wasn't easy. It was. <laughs> I had to really fucking bite my tongue in this one and just force myself to listen to it twice. I didn't want to, <laughs> dude, the second I was done with my final listen, I immediately deleted. it. <laughs> also, I will say the audacity of this album. They have an outro skit <laughs> followed by an outro skit. Fucking insane. That's absolutely insane. Yeah. For no reason. Well, to be fair, the first one, Universal uh, Shoutouts. Yeah, it's a skip, but it's it feels like a song. It's just it's like a song with a bunch of shadows instead of mm-hmm. r- rapping over it. Um, but I think those two on the th- that release, uh, they were removed from streaming. Okay, because uh, streaming it, it ends at uh, the crazies. Yes, it does. Uh, but there's two more tracks. Um, the same with you know the first album where they have one track removed. Whatever for whatever reason, but I'm sure it's not going to sway us all that much. But uh, we have one more album after this, from at least from the wiki standpoint. But uh, we're not talking about it because it's a fucking bullshit dog shit cash grab. That is six feet under. And uh, what is it? It's it's just a, a compilation. Yeah, from tracks. Off this album, Nightmare in A Minor, and then Fukon's solo album, Life. Yes. And then they slapped Grave Diggers on it and named it Six Feet Under, and it's a catastrophe. And they're doing it again. Uh, well, Fukon <laughs> is trying to do it again. By the way, motherfucker doesn't have a wiki page. Which is insane. It is absolutely insane. So I'm going to Google it here. Uh, there is a sequel called nightmare in b minor that should be releasing uh i believe the day before this drops what what day is this dropping uh is this november 1st i'm all i'm all i'm all mixed up i'm all too. mixed up too but either you know i'm gonna find out in a few seconds this either, is yeah yesterday it released yesterday yeah which we we found out about way late but also we're not gonna you all can listen to us right now. Listen to the album right now if you want to. I don't, I don't think you would. It It's just for Kwan. And here's the, here's the huge red flag. Yeah. If you look at this dog shit cover art, sorry. On the cover art, it has in parentheses grave parentheses, diggers. Parentheses, yes. Buddy, you're not grave diggers. You were, you were a grave digger for sure. But I, holy I, shit. Yes, I, please I, don't, don't nobody tell him that I said that. Yes, I appreciate the work you did. And Absolutely, the album I love you his made. voice. 
Uh, but this release, this is Frucon. Yeah, aka Gatekeeper. Yeah, the parentheses with Grave Diggers, literally in every title, even like even the page, mm-hmm. even his backhand page, it is that's troubling. It's like, oh man, come it's, on, ugh, dude. It's too obvious. You can't be that. You can't be that. Fuck no, man. I want better for you. Yeah, we know you. We know that you're not gonna fool us. I think, man, <laughs> <laughs> it's hurt my feelings. But uh, yeah, I feel like I fucking this just got me at the end. But you know why we're here, man? You get a fucking that 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 first up six feet deep. Yeah. God damn, is it good? Uh, we don't really have to recap. You know how we feel. We, we have the same opinions <laughs> that everyone else has, as they should. Yes. Uh, but it's fun. It's a fun album to talk about uh, generally because I, I mean I've been listening to that. It was one of the first hip hop things I ever really uh, even listened to. Oh, really? It's like this one of the, was like your introdu- introduction. Yeah, like I started the very first thing I, when I decided because I had to make a decision to listen to hip hop. Mm. I know I was like you know sixteen or seventeen. Uh, I started with Eminem uh, just because I, I hated him my entire youth. I was like, I probably don't hate him. And I gave it a shot. I was like, I don't hate him. Uh, I actually like him more then than I do now. But that quickly went to Public Enemy and then Wu-Tang. And then here it is. Great yeah. It was like the fourth album I heard. That was that. I was like, oh, my God, this is this is incredible. I was well into my hip hop journey when I heard this. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's just I'm a. Uh, as uh, as they say in pro wrestling, I'm just a mark for all things Wu Tang related. So, uh, so you would c- compete in a, a full on battle royale to get the unreleased one album that they made. I, I would. Shkreli had lost when he went to prison. I would sign me up for the Squid Games to get that that Wu Tang album. I don't think it's good at all. No. I have no faith that it's good at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bet based on the last thing they put out as a group that it's not good. I would imagine that, that's what makes me laugh that that exists. Like we're, we're making this one thing, one copy. No one can hear it. Yeah. It's just the one thing. Oh, well, I don't really want to hear it that much. anyway. <laughs> also like Ghostface is still good for albums. It's, it, the guy's career is insane. He, yeah, he he feels more prolific than anyone else. I yeah, I think um like going into it, I thought Jizza was my dude cuz Liquid Swords was my favorite solo album. He is the genius. He he is, but I think uh Ghostface has lived a fucking life and you hear it in almost all his songs. Oh man, he ain't got much left with that diabetes, that's for sure. He is not doing well. <laughs> he looks big. <laughs> I don't care. That poor man, he is yeah, he lived a thousand lifetimes. I forget if it was like one of his newer songs or one of his older songs. He said, you, you know, I used to rock the like gold eagle bracelet. Yeah, yeah. It's absurd. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty if, crazy. If you, people have never seen it. It's like a statue yeah. on his arm. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. The, it is actually worse than Danzig's Venom Claws, which is unbelievable that you can top that. <laughs> uh, how do you fucking, how do you drive? How do you get into a car with that thing? You don't drive, you probably New, do you don't drive New York. That's true. Yeah. And especially you don't drive New York if you're Ghostface. No, no. no. Fucking, what are you um, about? Anyways, I imagine him signing checks like that, though. That'd be great. He had some lyric about it, like coming to life and flying, flying away with it. I'm like, that's fucking, I'm like, you're you're the best, man. That's they why didn't you're the fucking best. turn that into a music video. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> also, if if you got because I don't know when I would bring up when I'd bring it up again. I think it's on Apple Music. Um, th- he had these skits on like MTV about like how to live like a, a hood life. Uh huh. And there's one about being on the hustlers diet, and it's just like the, the great- hustlers diet. It consists of eating potatoes because you can get a lot of them. <laughs> Hold on, that's the that is the worst reason I've ever heard. Hold on. <laughs> Cause you could get because you can get a lot of them. You get a lot of them cheap. You fry. <laughs> also, you could do a lot of things. You could do a baked potato. You could fry them up. You could do some some you, hash browns. They, I will give them that. It is one of the most flexible foods in in the entire universe. However, n- no nutritional value whatsoever. <laughs> Zero nutritional value. You're just trying to make it 
through the day <laughs> on the hustler diet. He ended up looking like him by the end of that day. And cans of tuna fish. Okay. All right. Because, again, it's cheap. You got some protein. All right. Fair enough. He's got a protein covered. And then if you got some money left over, you could get yourself some uh, Swedish fish and uh, and a 40. <laughs> Fuck, that's so gross. It's so gross. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think it's great. He also has a video about uh, the shoot Wally's like uh, Wally's. They're like a brand of shoes uh-huh. he he liked and made popular. And he has a video about like how he take them to like um, like Chinese clothing stores so he could get them like dyed different colors. He's this fascinating character. What a crazy dude. He's, Holy shit. He's the best. Man, imagine him and Grave Diggers. Oh, I think I would want to hear Fruquan call up Ghostface, call up the guys in Bad, Bad, Not Good. See what y'all can work out. I think that would be an interesting album. I would be, I'd be, I'd be far more interested than uh, than him by himself because I, I don't like him. I think he, I think you got lyrical prowess. Definitely does. I, I do like his voice. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think if you bring in a a producer band like bad bad not good or uh someone like adrian young i think i think you got it in you fruquan heed the call anyway <laughs> thank you so much for listening and watching and hanging out with us i want to end on a bad note oh no it's a great no we're listening we're, it's, it's a good thing thank you so much for listening and watching if you want to help support us uh, subscribe if you want to do that like the video if you like it talk shit in the comments leave your picks i mean you have the picks same picks as us. if you <laughs> if you really feel differently well if you can make an share, argument share with the, i'd love to hear it if you can make an argument as to why nightmare and a minor is better than six feet deep <laughs> please make that argument i'm begging you i'm dying to see some crazy shit <laughs> I can also find uh, the full album in the in the description and nothing. We're not going to put. I'm going to put two songs. Shut the fuck up. You're not putting songs. (laughs) I'm going to put. What did I say? The two songs that were. From from Nightmare and A Minor? Because we're not putting shit from the the, the, no, fucking, the no, sickle no. and the pickle. I'm going to put called? False Things Must Perish and Burn Baby Burn. Look at that. So you have a sort of playlist with the full six feet deep album and, and then two, two songs. songs. <laughs> We're fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. It's linked to that in the description. You can find all our play- playlists uh, at everyalbumever.com. You can even follow Alex directly on Spotify if, uh, if you want to do that where you get, uh, you know, first access to all the playlists and all that. For the love of Christ, patreon.com slash every album ever and we got bonus episodes early access to our loose ends episodes discounts off merch 20 25 percent off merch uh you get to see our schedules in advance you get to vote on polls to see who we're covering next uh you get to join the discord and uh be a part of our little community there and uh, as well as suggest our uh eae single episodes singles episodes Sh- shout out to uh page who messaged me and said she just joined because there's a band she's itching to hear us tackle oh so you can be cool like Paige. Oh, okay. I didn't even know she was a listener. I just thought she posts cool stuff on Instagram. Did I, I find out she's a listener? You I don't guys, know who that is, but I'm gonna. I I saw that that she joined, and thank you. You guys surprised me all the like always humbling. Thank you. Hell yes. Uh, and yeah, if you're for tier two, just like Paige, then she's officially bigger, bigger than Jesus. Now. Bigger than Jesus. You could a full episode, a long episode. And this is only three albums, but usually they go for two fucking hours and it's exhausting. And we're in hell for most of the week. Even if we like the band, it does take up a lot of time, which is why we charge money. So if you're tier two, you can suggest those and we will do it post haste. And by post haste, I mean somewhere between four and six months, because that's how long it takes <laughs> for us to catch up and get to it. It's a long list, a long yes. backlog. Yes. Thank you to everyone that's joined in. Go there. If you want to do that, uh, you can follow me on all social media at Pander Monkey and Alex on Instagram at Mother Puncture. Don't forget our, about our history boy, Tom Osmond. Uh, on, you can find him on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tom Osmond Sounds. In addition to his Substack, tomosmond.substack.com. Very fun reads there. Very interesting stuff. All music related, but in maybe ways you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, have imagined. Uh, and, and then his solo album, his debut record, So Much for On Day's Work, uh, which you could find a link to in the description. My EP, Pander Monkey, God, is these fucking plugs. Oh, my God. Pander Monkey, please check it out. There's a link to that in the description. I did it. It's cool. If you like hip-hop, you probably won't like it. It's cool. Uh, and then what else is that? Is that, is that it? I think that's it. I think we are done. Hell, yeah. <clears throat> so, what was it going to be? I think it's going to be Diary of a Madman. Oh, you know what? 
That feels right. It feels right. it feels right. So thank you so much for listening and watching. See ya.